Hey everyone, Richard Copperthwaite for Northwest Access TV. Thanks for joining us. And happy to have alongside uh, Reg Bellavo. My first time, Reg, I probably interviewed you when you weren't the Swanton Village Manager, now the, the former longtime Swanton Village Manager, but thought it'd be a good show to just come in and hear what you had to say, uh, kind of a new situation for you. Is it it's still a little strange not to be uh, being on call, I assume, 24 hours a day with anything that could go on in the village? Pretty nice to be uh, at least kind of retired at this point. Well, I, honestly, I can tell you I, I'm sleeping really well. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but yeah, it is odd. I and, mean, uh, and again, your successor, Bill Sheets, has been on board now for about what seven seven months or so. Yeah, I think uh, what was January one when yeah. we started. So, oh, so close, yeah. close, six, almost six months. Yeah, we had a we had a transitional period, and now that uh, uh, so we hired Heidi as uh, the uh, special projects coordinator. Heidi so. Bridgeville into the former yeah. longtime town administrator for Highgate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a good find for us. Uh, we're really happy to have her there, and she says huh. she's happy to be there. Yeah, and that's working out pretty well. But uh, so now I'm retired, so collecting you know uh, retirement from the, the state. So I got to be gone a month huh. uh, from the village. So uh, starting ja July 1st, I can uh, work part time as needed for the hydro relicensing. Right. So yeah, that yeah. was the uh, that was the intent that I would still. Uh, still help the the village with that uh, process i suspect you'll probably get more, more than a few calls about that i would guess uh, that huh? is going to be a process i mean right. it's you know we've when, talked about that often yeah, yeah there's you know when we have conversations with the state about this uh, the Depart uh, agency of natural resources yeah. and the rivers uh, people this i it baffles me as to why this process should be this difficult yeah you know uh, and more difficult uh, as you as you've told us before on the state front than the federal front yeah yeah, I mean, the federal government, the FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, they yeah. won't go against local government's, yeah. uh, you know, process or what their feelings are about the river quality and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but one would argue that, I mean, we've been there for so many years and we haven't caused any major, uh, you know, extinction of any uh, aquatic life in the river. So yeah. it must be we're doing something good. Yeah. You know, when we've uh, offered... Uh, you know, to change our runner river during walleye season for the spawning. We've offered to extend that. Uh, you know, we've made other concessions for them. Uh, and it's still, I mean, they, uh, what they're asking us to do is going to cause ratepayers uh, millions of dollars right. over the mm -hmm. over the life of the license. Really? Yep. Interesting. And at this yep. point, what's Swanton is, what, third, second or third lowest electricity rates in the state? Yeah, right now, I think, I'd have to go back and look, but I yeah. think it's the second lowest in the state. Wow. Yeah. But they'll definitely be going up because of the relicensing yeah. process. Yeah, we wouldn't be fired probably from GMP. Really? Yeah. Has, yeah. This, has, it, has the process gotten more cumbersome at the state level as time goes? This is, a, this is the first one you've been through? Or yeah, not? I mean, it's every 30 years. Yeah, it's every 30 so, years. Yeah, so I think one. in 91, they uh, extended the license because we raised the abutment. Huh. So before it was just the 175, we added the 15 feet, brought it to 190. Huh. Um, with the with the rubber bladder, yeah. and uh, we were uh, we were awarded uh, a little bit longer in that license. Huh. So right. now, 2024, April of 24 is when that uh, that license is due to expire. Yeah. Um, let's say we don't come to an agreement on the water quality the, uh, certificate that they want us. And is that uh, likelier than not to meet that, that deadline? That is pretty much no. We won't make that. We won't make no, it. Not the way. Not what they're asking for now. The really? more studies. Oh. Uh, yeah, we won't uh, we won't get there. So we'll still be able to run off our old license. Yeah. Uh, without the water quality certificate. Yeah. So FERC could come around and say, okay, you're issued your license to operate. Yeah. Uh, because we're considered a high hazard dam because of the height. Huh. Um, but then we would have to sit there and work with the state agencies. I trust there's no no fine involved if you don't make that deadline. No, fine. no, there's no fine involved in it. Huh. Uh, it's more arbitration and yeah. whatnot. I mean. I mean, we could sit there. I mean, you look at Morrisville. I think they're 10 years, 12 years into fighting their water that, quality. They're 4 right? Yeah, Really? And yeah. Enosburg Falls, I think they're going through this the now Enos, also. Yeah, Enosburg Falls, I think it's this year they were due wow. for their uh, for their relicensing. And I think, wow. yeah, uh, I don't no, I don't think they're going to get there. Wow. You know, and the, uh, the attorney that huh. we use from Virginia, I mean, Paul Nolan, yeah. um, I mean, he's, he's well known in FERC yeah. for, his, uh, for his work. Um, 
you know, the state agency doesn't really like him because, yeah. you know, of his tactics and yeah. techniques and stuff, but we're not yeah. there to, uh, you know, to make, uh, he's, he's working for us, yeah. you know, and, uh, well, basically he's working for our rate payers too, yeah. um, you know, in that aspect. So, um, you know, it's when you have businesses in the community, so all of our ratepayers can say that they're receiving energy from 100% renewable resources. Yeah. So whatever we don't produce, uh, Richard, we're getting our power from other areas like uh, like other hydros, yeah. like uh, solar uh, and some wind. Uh, You're getting most of your power. Most of it is from what you generate yourself. Yeah. yeah. So when the river's running well, we yeah. can produce more than what we need. Really? Yeah. Huh. So this rainfall helped us yeah. again. Well, I'm sure happy. I'm sure you folks are. I'm always happy to see rain around here. There's never yeah. enough rain for me. I suspect you probably feel the same way. Huh? Yeah, I mean, it's been dry. So yeah. we've had a, we had a tough May. Yeah. Um, you know, June didn't look too, too bad. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're hoping, you know, if you get those, you know, a couple of rainstorms a week and stuff, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it helps. Yeah. It helps. But, uh, you know, because of the way the grid or the grid, the way the infrastructure is set up right now and demand for power, the f next best thing is fuel. Yeah. So your uh, diesel generators and stuff, uh, propane power generators, that is going to yeah. be your next uh, easiest way to get generation. And that takes you away from 100 percent renewable. Um, how many how many customers with Swanton Village Electric? I believe we're 3,800 really, now. 3,800? Yeah. And that, that's all, all of the village, I assume? It's and, uh, So most? it's pretty much most of the village, uh, yeah. a lot of the town. Yeah. Uh, if you head out towards West Swanton, you get the Vermont Electric Co-op. Yeah. If you head out towards yeah. uh, uh, St. Albans, you're going to get uh, GMP out yeah. in that area. You've got a little spur out in uh, the Tyler Place that is oh. Vermont Electric Co-op. Oh, Interesting. Yeah, so it's funny how that, I mean, I don't know the, the whole history behind yeah. that, but how it worked out. But uh, actually, the power runs through us to get to, uh, really? yeah, to get to uh, the Tyler place. Sure. I mentioned this to uh, Sharon Busquette, the new Highgate Town Administrator. Sharon's taken command in Highgate now from Select Board Chairman to the new Town Administrator. But yeah. at the town meeting in Highgate that I went to, one of the uh, Highgate residents asked her at one point, Hey, I'm not real happy with Vermont Electric Co-op. I'd much rather have Swanton Village Electric. Can I make that? And I think Sharon said, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. And, of course, the answer is no, not that. No, it's, uh, it's not an <laughs> easy process. It doesn't work that way. No, not an easy process. Huh. I mean, we... Does that, does that ever change? Does, does that ever change? If, if the utility is connected in yeah. one way, in one fashion. So let's say, for example, the, the one I just gave, uh, yeah. the Tyler Place. Yeah. I mean, Vermont Electric Co-op could turn around and say, well, you could buy this. Huh piece of the grid from yeah. us huh. so there is a dollar figure associated with it oh yeah yeah but i mean if you uh if i mean if you're uh, in a, a passenger in a car obviously not driving and you're paying attention to the power lines yeah. all of a sudden if you notice that the power lines cease huh. and then you see another pole yeah and then there's no no connector between those two poles generally yeah. that's a trans that's a transfer of a different utility oh really interesting yeah yeah boy speaking of overhead power just making me think of something driving through i guess south burlington within the last week or so. And sometimes in different places, I'll see these signs every block, overhead power lines. But why, I mean, aren't there overhead power lines ev everywhere? Why am I yeah. seeing those so, signs so, just once in a while? So typically what'll happen is uh, they'll they'll put those signs on the road if they're doing road work, road oh. construction. Okay. So if they're gonna have the big uh, uh, excavators. I guess I probably so, should have thought, thought of that. Yeah. I'm saying, why? What, what's different here than any place else? Yeah. And so, also, so the, work. yeah, also the dump trucks. You know, when you get the trucks that are, right. you know, they raise the bed of the truck, so that they're not dragging the lines. Okay, and, I guess I probably should have thought of that, but yeah. that hadn't crossed my mind. No, that's right. And speaking of Highgate, it sounds like it's been a pretty good role. I know there've been disputes at times over the years. I vaguely remember some of them, but how much Highgate should get for tax revenues for being the home of the Ormini Croft generating facility? But that's been a pretty good relationship. Not yeah. too many issues with that. No, I mean, uh, I believe the formula and Lynn and I Lynn Paradis she's the accountant for the village yeah. we had conversations about how that formula was derived and huh. I believe it was in the legislature uh, we had that uh, so it's rather than having it be on property tax it's based on generation yeah. uh, so revenue basically 
Yeah. And uh, there's a calculation, and I don't know what the calculation is, Richard. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Highgate folks seem pretty pretty happy with things these days. That sounds like it's been a pretty good relationship. Yeah. You know, and you know, when you when you look at the inability to uh, to uh, pond like we are now, if the state has their way, I mean that affects that affects uh, Highgate's revenue. Yeah. So it affects their taxpayers. Yeah. It affects the ratepayers. And so also yeah. there's ratepayers in Highgate. Um, you know, pretty much all of Swanton Village, yeah. Swanton Town, and part of St. Albans yeah. Town. Uh, so when you're looking at it, it's not, it's not just your utility, it's, it's far-reaching, you know, the impact that this could make. Uh, also the businesses. I mean, a lot of them get, uh, yeah. get uh, uh, what is it called, uh, I don't want to say compensation and stuff, but they get, uh, like you know. pilot or something? Or? Well, they turn around and they say, well, we're getting 100% renewable power. Yeah. You know, they could, so a lot of companies, when they're purchasing stuff from another company, that's what yeah. they look for, the green companies. Yeah. I mean, when you've got yeah. beta wanting to come in too, yeah. you know, that's an electric, uh, a battery uh, yeah. uh powered uh, aircraft yeah um, they're going to be getting power from Swanton Village yeah as well Interesting. so I mean it's renewable and they are renewable so yeah what, what's the state the state's goal is to have uh, you can tell me by is it by 2050 or 2030 what's the goal to have uh, so like it, green green or renewable yeah, energy they want 90 percent of all yeah. the energy that we have in the state by 2050 be by uh, 2050. From, yeah, be renewable uh, energy. Well, is that is that a realistic? Is that a smart goal? A well, realistic goal? We have so being on the energy committee as well for the village still. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's so the energy committee is is a offshoot of the planning commission. Yeah. Right. So if you remember back uh, when we had the town plan, part of the town plan was to have an energy committee. By having an energy committee within your town plan, gave you deference at the PUC. Huh. So for siting of renewable uh, energy, so i.e. Yeah. the wind towers that they wanted to put on St. Albans Hill, Swanton Wind, yeah, Swanton Wind yeah. at one time. Uh, so we couldn't go in and argue that unless we had an energy committee. Oh, really? So now we have an energy committee, we could go argue that. And you and indeed you argued you you argued against that. Well, so that was pre the energy okay. committee. Okay. So and why why was that not a why why did you a lot of folks around here were not happy with that project? Why was that not a good project in your Well, so yeah, un, to, un, unnecessary, well you tell me. Well, I, yeah, to go back, I mean, yeah. it's one it's it was unnecessary because yeah. in in this area that was so that is GMP's territory yeah. and there was no way to move that power out of there. Huh. So the lines aren't aren't sized appropriately. Right. So when we talked about the 20 by the 50 uh, or the 90 percent by 2050, yeah. uh, there's a lot of factors that play into this as well as electrification. So when I was talking about the energy committee having having conversations about yeah. this, I mean we're all for the electrification. We're all for you know renewables. Yeah. Um, obviously. Uh, the way uh, electric cars are, are uh, being built now, you're going to have better range, longer range, but you still yeah. need to charge them somewhere, somehow. Yeah. Uh, most homes that are built, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, they have 100 amp services. Yeah. So 100 amp services, when you're trying to plug in your car in, let's say, your 50%, yeah. um, I can't remember what the what the number is, but you're not going to get 100% by really morning really over eight hours period. Wow. You know, so in order to do that. You should have a, a, a 220 line huh. in, into your garage or wherever you park your car to plug it in and in order to get. Typically, people don't don't have that. They, they, no, not typically. No, 100 amp services. Some of them are, you know, 50 amp services. Right, your thoughts so. on just uh, the push for electric vehicles? Does that make sense to you, or do you think this it, is kind of an overreach? Or boy, you know, it's kind of like the cart in front of the horse. Yeah. You know, it's just like when they did the CUDs. Huh. The communication union districts, huh. uh, you know, we threw a bunch of money at CUDs and stuff, but what did they have for infrastructure? Yeah. What did they have for uh, assets? Huh. You know, they had a group of people brainstorming on how they were going to get cable and, and broadband out across the rural areas. Which we're still still working on. Still working on, but you yeah. don't have the people, you don't have the equipment, right. and, and, you know, then COVID comes in and, and, and yeah. messes everything up. Now you've got, uh, uh, um, you've got... Uh, your materials well, as in and lithium comes to mind which isn't yeah which, yeah. which is there no lithium does the u.s have any any um, that i'm not sure yeah, yeah. I, I think it's all has to get brought in from somewhere yeah yeah 
So, I mean, when you're looking at, you know, just the wires in the air, yeah. I mean, those lead times are horrendous. Right now, I believe uh, it's been a few months since I've had to talk to the linemen. Yeah. But uh, I think it's almost like a, a year out, a year and a half for a transformer. Really? So you have, so basically if you're, so let's say this whole block, let's say, for example, we'll, we'll throw uh, 207 out there, yeah. uh, Highgate Road. Just let's, say, uh, let's say if everybody on that grid, on that, uh, on that circuit, yeah. wants to have all electric cars and everything else, so you're going to have to look at what are the transformers sized for every, every uh, homeowner, what, is the conduct, what are the size of the conductors, will the, yeah. will the conductors, the wires in the, in the air carry the circuit to those homes uh, to, re to charge their electric vehicles, yeah. you know, and then they want to do, okay, so get away from fossil fuels, they don't want to have... Yeah. You know, fuel oil, so they're going to have to have either heat pumps or or something yeah. to heat. So now you got another uh, load onto yeah. your onto your system. Yeah. If you do uh, heat pumps, um, you know, it's it, it, it's compounding yeah. itself. So, what do you do first? What does your grid look like? Yeah. Okay, so you got to upsize your grid, uh, and then you know, and then you upsize your transformers, and then okay, well, you got generation to get there. Where you're going to get your power from? Yeah. Well, if you're reducing where you get your power from already, which is a renewable resource like Highgate, yeah. where are you going to get it from now? Yeah. And you know how we've been having issues in the winter time yeah. with, uh, you know, they're talking about rolling brownouts because of uh, you know trying to get electricity up here because the yeah. cities are. You know, drawing a lot of the uh, a lot of the load. Was that was that? A, I guess I hear references to that one. Was that a concern even last winter? Yeah, there, is there's that right? always a concern. I mean, really? they they have. Has that, uh, has that ever happened? I don't recall that happening. We haven't had that happen because of yeah. the fact that the, the you know it's almost like when you're looking at a heat wave, while yeah. you're also looking at a cold snap. Yeah. So below zero temperatures for an extended period of time, well yeah. below zero, yeah. that could affect the grid immensely. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And a lot of the, you know, a lot of the issues with that, it's not necessarily the lack of natural gas to power those generators. It's yeah. more the size of the pipe to yeah. carry the natural gas yeah. to those generators to produce the electricity. So there's some real basic infrastructure issues here. Yeah. I yeah. guess I should ask you about S5, the so-called Affordable Heat Act, which, which Pat, boy, the governor just needed, what, one more Senate vote to uh, block that, but didn't, didn't get it. Um, your, your thoughts on that? Were you less than impressed with, uh, uh, this, it's, it's of course, just, the Franklin County, don't blame the Franklin County legislature. I think, you know, all the Republicans, I think, in the delegation voted against it. Mike McCarthy, the one Democrat, I think, supported it. Yeah. But uh, so not, 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 not impressed. No, I mean, if you look at, you know, when you look at a lot of the changes that the state wants to make, yeah. a lot of it is, you know, they always talk about the uh, the low income, moderate income families. Yeah. Okay, within the state of Vermont, and you know, yes, we do have a, a large demographic of them. We also have a large demographic of uh, seniors. Yeah. Uh, you know, older adults within the state. So, right. and who are the, the most? Yeah. So, who are the most vulnerable, vulnerable yeah. in this? Yeah. So, we're going to impact them. Yeah. So, how are they going to pay for the fuel? How right. are they going to heat their homes? Yeah. Uh, how are they going to travel to work? So, now you're putting the burden on them. In essence, you're going to get state programs that yeah. are going to subsidize them somehow, some way, and then the burden's going to get shifted to the middle to higher income people. Yeah. You know, that's just. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, they're not. You're going to have people freeze to death. You're going to have people sitting yeah. at home. You're going to have to pay unemployment more. Yeah. I mean, how's this going to work? Yeah. Right. So I, th I guess they softened it a little bit. What the PUC, Public Utility Commission, is supposedly studying this and trying to get a price tag on yeah. what the what, what this the would cost. But I was certainly struck by a lot of the small, medium fuel dealers just going all out in opposition, and they still couldn't quite block it. Yeah. No, I don't, it's huh. you know. Boy, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta you gotta uh, you gotta see the trees from through the forest. Yeah. You know you gotta you gotta pace yourself. So to go back to the original question, yeah. you know what do I feel about electrification? Yeah, all of that. I think yeah. we have to do something. I have always been. Uh, I mean, I'll complain all day long when I have to go to the pumps. Yeah, and we are we are held captive by foreign oil. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, how can we get away from that so we can be more domestic yeah. in our in uh, in our assets? And one of them is our natural gas assets yeah. here within within the country, of which we seem to have. Uh, we have whole plentiful. Lot. Yeah, and what's the? Uh, I was told once what is our largest exporter right now? Yeah. is natural gas. Really, guess where the money is. Yeah. Right. 
and it's like uh, and you know, a lot of liquefied natural gas in yeah. these days. Yeah, and you would think that we learned from COVID to try yeah. to do things domestically. Yeah, you know, and keep keep assets local. Yeah, so we can you know make our country strong. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I think you need to pace this. Is it the right thing to do? Yes, I think it is the right thing to do. But you can't force people into that. You have to make things yeah. easy for them. Yeah. And by you know raising the gas tax, it's just going to make it harder on others. And of course, that's a big question with all with increasing numbers of electrical electric vehicles. Hey, what's the story with them? They're not obviously paying any. Yeah. I guess it's some someone's trying to figure out how to get some money out of the increasing number of uh, EVs. I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So eventually, what you'll see is, yeah. is whenever you know, if you have an electric car, you obviously yeah. you're not paying gas tax. So when you go in and have your vehicle inspected, yeah, you get, you'll get have hit a, that way. You'll have a yeah. You'll yeah. have a surcharge on the amount of miles you drive electrically. Interesting. Yeah. One, one other power issue, talking to the Highgate folks, I, I guess maybe saw some story, but at the converter station in Highgate, I guess there's some work going on. There's some stuff going on there. Yeah. I don't, you know, that's, this, that's this, of course, Canadian hydropower that comes in there. Yeah, and that's uh, Velco. Velco. Yeah. So From Velco is a distributions uh, company right. within the state of Vermont. Yeah. So you got distribution. At, so uh, the way I always explain distribution and transmission, yeah. uh, or transmission and distribution to people, yeah. so transmission is like your river. And distribution huh. is like your brooks and your streams coming off your river. Huh. So Velco is the is the transmission huh. for the state of Vermont, huh. and uh, the distribution. We do have some transmission lines from our our Highgate plant, yeah. but not uh, not to the extent of Velco, yeah. not at all. Interesting. Well, let's let's go back back in time. Talking, we could talk power for hours here. You're talking about an issue you you know so well. Give us a little background on yourself. I trust folks have seen you on these shows periodically, but uh, I was just struck as, uh, how, how many years as village manager? I've even lost track of that. I so uh, March was a full 12 years. Wow. And uh, so the mid, mid-May, mid mid-June, huh. mid-May, yeah. I, uh, I officially retired. Yeah. So I was working part-time, 20 hours a week. Yeah, and uh, officially uh, mid-May. Had that been had that been long planned? Had you been thinking about that for I was, quite a while? I was thinking or? about it uh, like 18 months before really? the uh, yeah before uh, yeah. January one. I was thinking about it. Huh. I mean, my biggest thing when I had talked to the trustees that um, you know I was looking for candidates out there that could possibly fill fill my slot. Yeah. Um, you know, I had always hoped that whomever came in. And filled my shoes, they would do an even better job than I. Yeah, probably you know? saying a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm I think, sure it's a good hope. Obviously. Yeah. I think Bill is doing a really great job. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun working with him during the transitional period. Yeah. He, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, the people like him. Another so, guy who local guy who knows uh, local terrain pretty yeah. well. Yeah. But you know, I think it, when you look at this position. And uh, I've said it many times, it's more of a privilege than it is, huh. uh, you know, to be a, a manager for a municipality. No. And, uh, you know, when people say, well, look at all your accomplishments and stuff, they says, well, you yeah. know what? The employees helped make that accomplishment. Yeah. How many employees with the village? There's 36 employees. 36. Yeah. And you've had a pretty stable workforce over the during your years as I, village manager? So that was one of the things that I ensured that yeah. we had good quality employees yeah because when you have a small uh workforce like yeah. that if you have yeah. a poor performer yeah. it brings the really rest kind of, the, of stands out too. Yeah, it brings the rest of the team down yeah and uh yeah so you mean you give an individual all the opportunities to succeed yeah and if they can't then i mean we give them an opportunity to look elsewhere and so you you, you feel you fared pretty well with your with your workforce i think so yeah i really do i mean bill has touted he said, you know, that you've laid a magnificent yeah. uh, groundwork here with the employees. Yeah. We do have a great team. Yeah. So you got to so. feel pretty, when you look back on your, now you can look back at this stuff <laughs> as your 12 years, you got to feel pretty pretty good about 12 years as village manager, I can only assume. I, yeah. I mean, I'm I mean, sure you can point to a lot of accomplishments. I'm sure there's some obviously disappointments and stuff with any anything like this, but. Yeah. I mean, feel like you feel like Swanton Village is in a, I mean, a better better place now than when you started. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think there's more uh, com more community involvement. Yeah, uh, you know when we had the uh, 
when we had the uh, uh, the Vermont Council on Rural Development. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, the Vermont Council on Rural Development Sworn, came yeah. in and we did the uh, community visit. Yeah, uh, that spawned a lot of wow. community uh, engagement. Yeah, and that was fantastic. Yeah. and then we had the Climate Economies Models Community Program come in for efficiency. Yeah. Uh, we Sworn had an enhancement project comes to mind yeah. too. Yeah. We had a lot of. Uh, they said that that those two uh, those two uh, meetings were probably one of the highest attended in the state. Wow! Really? Yeah. Uh, and then you know, come off that, you have the energy committee. So we've had a lot of uh, small. Uh, we've had a farmers event. We had a ride and uh, a ride and drive event for electric vehicles. We had lawn equipment uh, event. Uh, we've now we're going to start do uh, reaching out a little bit more with safe routes to school again huh. with Amy Brewer uh, huh. we did a lot of work with Amy uh, way back uh, when we had the paving project through the village huh. that's where you see a lot more we added a couple of crosswalks we added the yeah. reflective uh, crossings yeah. flashing crosswalks yeah. uh, and we, the one on Liberty Street was to improve the safe routes to school where kids could walk to school better. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that we kept hearing from them was that First Street is a hard street to cross. Yeah. Well, Liberty Street has the sidewalk, and the sidewalk that sidewalk goes directly to the elementary school. Yeah. So that was the prime area to put the sidewalk or the flashing uh, crosswalk. Now we've got an LVRT, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, uh, pretty much finished. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess the governor is going to be up here, what, July 15th, I guess is the date I'm hearing. Yeah, he's going to bike all bike from Swanton to, yeah. I guess, uh, Senator Sanders is going to be on hand, too. I suspect he might not bike the whole way, but but anyway, but that sounds like, I know that meant a lot to the governor, but what a tremendous resource. Hopefully that'll have some good benefit for Swanton, being on the, obviously, western terminus of that. Yeah, and I think, you know, when you look at that retrospect, the, uh, with the uh, Lamoille Valley Rail Trail, I think Joel Clark played a big Sounds part. Sounds like Joel was a key player there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I think the I think the former Swanton uh, selectman, the uh, connection that we made and the communications that we've uh, continued to do with the town select board and the village trustees, to me that was paramount yeah. in in one of the missions that I wanted to have accomplished within yeah. the village. Yeah. You, know, you kept hearing the merger, merger, merger conversation. Yeah. Well, the village runs the businesses and the town manages the records. Yeah. You know, and they do that very well. And I think we manage the businesses very well. Yeah. Being a, uh, a taxpayer within the village, it's important to me to know that I have two boards that can work well together yeah. to, f you know, for the better of the whole community. Yeah. You know, uh, and it sounds like um, the village and town, the boards have have generally worked pretty well together. Yeah, I think we've worked really well together. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you're going to have your disagreements. I mean, it's just like in Albany City and town, who finally seem to be over their uh, long time yeah. issues, uh, should have been so lucky. But no, it sounds like the village and town have fared pretty well. Yeah, I mean, as long as you know and you learn. Uh, you agree to disagree yeah. and you come out of it like, okay, I yeah. see your point. I see your side, yeah. you know, and as long as you can come up with that uh, compromise and stuff, you can get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm on the development review board. And so you're the, still, you're, yeah. I mean, yeah. you've been such a community minded guy. It sounds like that's not going away. Well, are you, are you still on the fire department or no? So I am, I retired from the fire department. Well, I'm still after, after many, many 30, years, 34 years. Wow. Yeah. And I am still the Swanton's emergency management director. And I think that's what we go. I was going to mention that. I think yeah. we go back to what the 1998 ice storm, 98 I think, ice storm. Yeah. when we were kind of first uh, dealing with each other. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, who could, who could forget that? I remember that. It was yesterday. Yeah. So I'm still doing that. Wow. Uh, my other part-time job, I'm actually uh, the state, uh, the fire marshal's office, the yeah. Division of Fire Safety hired me. Really? Uh, to head up the state's fire prevention programs. Really? So wow. the community risk uh, reduction programs, yeah. the uh, fire safe 802 programs, the, the uh, community risk analysis programs. Wow. So I'll be working directly out of the Waterbury office in uh, remote uh uh, also, boy, that sounds like a big change. Is that, is that just part part time? It's part time, boy, it and sounds, it, it is sounds more than part time. It is a, a it is a, a big lift. Yeah, but uh, it's going to be more coordinating, organizing, um, yeah. and, and analyzing what's out there and and what uh, our community needs, our state needs for oh. fire education, fire prevention. Oh, so we're not talking any any real retirement, putting your feet up uh, all all day here. 
And again, is that hard for you to picture? Your obviously your <coughs> hard working background is it? Is that the last thing you wanted to do? Just kind of get away from all work? Is that something that's <coughs> hard to picture at this point still? I could not see Couldn't myself fully retire. Yeah. No. I knew the position. <coughs> you know, you do the old. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the old Kenny Rogers song, no one to hold them, no one to fold them. Yeah, yeah. I knew that I reached the end of my, uh, I think, my abilities within the village manager. Yeah. <clears throat> it was more, yeah. I was, I gave it my all, mm. and I kind of ran out of steam. Interesting. You know, so looking at that position, it's like, huh. <clears throat> you know, you're managing, you're managing the people, you're managing the businesses, but then yeah. you're man you're keeping an eye on the community. Sure. What's what's the a uh, appetite for the community? What's the atmosphere of the community? Yeah. How can we bring more businesses in? How can we bring more residents in and make our community strong? Yeah. I got to a point where <clears throat> there was a lot of asks of of the office and not enough assistance in the office. Yeah. So, so the, the job had lost a little bit of its, uh, or whatever word I want, uh, over over the years a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Take, yeah, I don't know if it's break. I don't know if it's the luster it lost, yeah. but it. Uh, my passion for the Your community passion. and for helping yeah. uh, was, uh, I think, it overcame uh, huh. myself, and it got to a point where I just I knew I needed to retire. Yeah. You know, and get somebody else in there. Like I said earlier, yeah. there's somebody that can do an even better job than I did. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and I think I laid the groundwork, good groundwork. Yeah. Uh, Bill's going to do a great job. The employees are going to work well for him. Yeah. Uh, with him. And uh, yeah. And I think, uh, you know, the community is at a better place yeah. now. Interesting. Well, you, you certainly <coughs> left your mark big time. And I, I mean, such a community minded. Uh, Person, I did congratulate Bill uh, who found some time and appreciated the trustees giving giving him a little time to coach the uh, yeah. MVE girls softball team. Great, great season. Didn't end up with the greatest last game, but heck of a season. I said you're going to be back next year. I said, yep, yeah, think so. But uh, yeah. sounds like that was probably a good a good break. Well, that was one of the things the yeah. trustees were they, <clears throat> you know, when you're if you have a good board. And they they allow you to do the things that need to get done. Yeah, that drops a lot of uh, barriers down for you. Yeah, gives you a lot of latitude to get things done. I mean, granted, you're gonna you're gonna catch the Dickens yeah. if, if you're screwing up. Yeah, you know, if they don't like your direction, but you got to make sure that you're getting the approval from them before you head in a certain direction. Yeah, uh, the great trustees over the years. I mean, we know we haven't had a lot of changes within the board. Yeah. And, you know, you hear some people complain about the good old boys and everything else, but yeah. nothing's broken. Good old good old boys, they probably know, <clears throat> yeah, have a, talk you know. about great institutional knowledge and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, it's not, it's not as easy as just plug and play. Yeah. I mean, within the positions, I mean, because each trustee is a commissioner of the water plant, sewer plant, yeah. hydro, the police, the fire, yeah. the public works. You know, so you have to have some institutional knowledge of those facilities as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, granted, the manager kind of uh, uh, directs the conversation for the trustees and fills them in, but <clears throat> still, you need to have that institutional knowledge. Yeah. You know, and the trustees are sure uh, are pretty intelligent people. Yeah. Um, so that helped accomplish a lot of things within within the village i think yeah. is having a good support staff uh you know with the trustees yeah swanton village pd the, your successor uh notes that swanton village pd says is the only fully funded police department in, in the state yeah and i guess that was on the case under your watch as well huh yeah Right. Yeah. I'm sure they're looking forward to some new bigger digs, which I guess are in the works also. Yeah, that would be. So that was one of the the uh, the thoughts that I had way back when. Yeah. And then there was just so many projects that sure. you know you have to prioritize which one comes first. Yeah. But I'm glad Bill picked up on that one. Yeah. Uh, Matt Sullivan is a great <clears throat> police chief. Uh, he's he's developed a nice, uh, a great strong staff. <clears throat> you know, we have. Yeah. I think. Uh, you know. I've always loved the fact that the, the, the police department, they would, you know, they'd walk by the office, they'd stop, say, yeah. hey, what's going on, you know, and how you doing and all this other stuff. Yeah. And we chit chat. They even, they, you know, they'd sit down and just talk about stuff, yeah. you know, and yeah. uh, talk about home life, talk about their work, yeah. that kind of stuff. 
Uh, mm -hmm. They are wonderful people. They care about the communities. Mm -hmm. You know, the majority of them live within the community. Mm -hmm. And it's more of a, uh, you know, it's a, th it's a thoughtful police department, yeah. I think. You know, it's like, yeah, you're going to get arrested if you do the wrong things. Yeah. But we're going to give you every opportunity to straighten yourself up, yeah. you know, before we actually going to arrest you. Which I mean, there's, there's been cases where, you know, somebody was... Uh, you know, intoxicated or whatever, and you know, we offered to give them a ride and everything yeah. else, but then things go sideways. Yeah, you know, and things happen. Uh, but no, I, I'm just so proud of what the police department has accomplished, yeah. and, uh, and Matt is a great chief. Yeah, he's got great officers. So. And I, I would, I would tend to guess that he's uh, probably happy that his <coughs> former boss in Burlington finally is the now a permanent police chief. That didn't take too long. No, it didn't John, take too long. John Murad finally getting the uh, yeah. vote despite four four progs, of course, still voting against him, but now finally the uh, permanent police chief. Yeah, yeah. I've That's never met the guy, so it sure seems like a pretty solid guy to me. Yeah, uh, uh, Matt's always liked him. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like the position. Be careful what you wish for, yeah. because boy, Burlington needs some help. Yeah, sure seems like it. In your 12 years as village manager, did the did the PD? I mean, I'm sure every you know all these organizations evolve and stuff. But are you struck by crime being different categories? I mean, you always hear about drugs and stuff. But as you look back on your 12 years, did the PD's situation, what they were dealing with, change change a lot? Not that you were the the chief, but obviously you're still watching over all this stuff. Yeah. I think as far as the uh, the crimes, the gr the yeah. crimes haven't really. I don't feel have shifted or changed yeah. in their, uh, other than the fact that some of the inner city problems that we're seeing are yeah. migrating up this way. Yeah. COVID made them, uh, made that ability more uh, easy for them. Yeah. They could hide better because everybody was in lockdown. Yeah. So these people could come up and, you know, and hide out and whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the things we've seen is more of the inner city, more of the gang stuff, you know, yeah. with that one murder that we had on First Street. Yeah. Uh, but as yeah. I think um, drug task force, uh, I mean, could we use a, uh, a, uh, uh, an officer that just focuses on that? Yeah, we could use that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've got people that, you know, they don't wake up in the morning and say, hey, t you know, I'm going to be a drug addict this week. Yeah. You know? I mean, society has put us to this point, and now we have to figure out how we can help our our people, the yeah. ones that are uh, addicted, get out of this. Yeah. You know, and these people that uh, uh, these I call them pushers. Uh, these people are uh, are criminals of opportunity. You get somebody hooked on it, you get them hooked on it by accident, or you get them hooked on it because they're hooked on it, yeah. and they just keep feeding them, and then it's just a vicious circle. Interesting. You know. But I, I haven't seen a big shift. I mean, uh, you know, you hear a lot of the select board of the trustees talk about speeding, speeding, speeding. I always hear about speeding. <coughs> Adam, Adam Paxman come, comes to mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Adam and I go, go round and round sometimes. But, uh, I mean, I'm struck by that. I used to be on 105 just about every day between St. Albans and Enosburg, and I could just count on people backed up behind me. I'm, I have no problems with the speed limit or maybe five miles over, yeah. and I just un unbelievable. I mean, I never come across anybody going slower, if that's a word, than myself. And good, good luck on the interstate. Oh yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, now I'm I'm traveling to Waterbury for the yeah, for wow. the new position and yeah. stuff. It's like, wow. boy, if you go 70, you're going to get run good, over. Good luck if you're going even 70. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I think speeding is a big issue. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that has changed a whole lot. I think it's yeah. is it's become worse <clears throat> yeah. because of COVID. You know, as soon as the state police said that, you know, hey, we don't have enough uh, uh, officers out so, there to enforce traffic, uh, and people are just going crazy. Yeah. And now it's just going to be it's you know it's it's uh it, it's at a high peak. Yeah. And now we're going to have to figure out how to how to. Uh, get it back into shape yep, and the labor, <clears throat> labor labor shortage situation doesn't help i think bill sheets was talking of course former longtime vsp guy yep. i think he had i think the figure he gave us was the state police are down maybe 60 or 70 troopers or something statewide yep. and just about every most police departments can can relate yep. Boy, and not and we're not seeing a ton of people signing up to be police officers these days no, I mean, when, when being on the fire department, you know, when you go to a, a, a car accident, yeah. you know, when you're waiting on backup, if it's outside of the village, you know, yeah. you're waiting on the VSP. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be an hour and a half, two hours wow. before somebody shows up, really? you know. Um, I know our our guys, our PD will come in to assist. Yeah. You know, we really need them and stuff to 
you know, if there's documentation or if it's a DUI or whatever. Yeah, but, uh, and I guess the Ranvier can get some help sometimes from, like, Border Patrol being, uh, you know, close to the border and stuff. So it sounds yeah. like those folks will help out once in a while if they can. Yeah. But, boy, this sounds like such a, such a big issue. You know, and it's, you know, going through, uh, going through the, uh, you know, over the years of being a manager and stuff, and I had, you know, one of my employees and— you know, he was a really great guy, got killed in a motorcycle accident. Wow. You know, it's when you look at what happens when you drive, you know, either too fast for conditions or you yeah. try to pass, you know, you look typically 105. Yeah. You know, how many deaths have That's, happened there, motorcycle deaths. It's like, yeah. you know, we just need to learn how to slow down because you, you, you're you only going to die once. Yeah. And it's pretty much permanent. Yeah. Right. So it's good. Good luck with that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, you know, driving the interstate and driving 105, yeah. uh, you know, going up to uh, where I hunt in Berkshire. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm scared a lot of the time just yeah. watching the people drive. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. I just, I guess when you get older, you kind of realize how valuable life is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have, I have these same, same thoughts, believe me. Yeah. Huh. It's time for the Franklin County State <clears throat> Airport project. Uh, that certainly sounds like it could be uh I mean, just a, a big thing down down the road. Yeah. And of We're, course, Swanton Village, almost as we speak, the extension of the water and sewer lines from MVU over to the airport. That work this this coming up this summer. It was right? supposed to have been this spring, this and I know uh, got delayed I, a bit. I believe there were some uh, right away acquisitions oh, that yeah. had been slowing it. I think there was still some uh, materials huh. uh, that were uh, slowing it. Yeah. Um, because it was uh, the project was turned over to Heidi. Uh, I'm not privy to a lot of, uh, you know, recent yeah. activities and stuff. I mean, we have the river crossing also for the, uh, right. you know, because the water line's on the bridge, right. and that's going to get constructed in 2029, reconstructed. So we needed a redundant water line anyway. Right. Uh, that one was supposed to happen already. Huh. Uh, that one has been delayed as well. And I believe it's, uh, it, it was uh, permits from the state huh. that would delayed that. Yeah. Uh, again, workforce uh, hindered. Yeah. hindered. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, but I mean, that airport project that is going to be a uh, uh, that is going to be a, a, a good asset for us here. Oh, it sure, sure seems like it. Yeah. a lot of potential. It would seem. I guess the airport is closed at this point for right. airplane well, traffic. Is yeah. there what extending and working on the runway? Yeah, they're working on the runway now. Oh, yeah, I can remember where we're going to a meeting, and I don't remember if it was Highgate or the town, and people were concerned about well, what's you know once we get this industrial park up and running and yeah. stuff, what are we going to do with all these people? Well, hopefully yeah. all these people are now residents that live here already yeah. and they're not traveling to Chittenden County. Right. And you that know? brings Tim Smith. Uh, I talked when I interviewed Tim Smith, the St. Albans mayor and exec director of Franklin County Industrial Development Corp. Yeah, that's his big thing. If we can just convince uh, a hunk of the people driving to Burlington area every day to stay here for what could be good jobs, that sounds like the, yep. the key to having... You know, more folks available for jobs around here. Sounds like it makes sense if you don't have to commute. Geez, why commute? Right, right. But that sounds like a, a key to convince a bunch of those folks to hang around here more. Yeah. If it's an hour and a half, two hours out of your day. Yeah. You know, three hours if it's winter. Yeah. You know? And then, and then, okay, it's the price of gas. Yeah. And then the new bill, raise gas prices even more. Yeah. It's going to be more advantageous to work locally so airport project you see that as a pretty solid project down 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 the road oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i know uh there's probably other opportunities by extending that uh, water line yeah uh you know for other extensions into highgate as Any, well has there been a talk of course highgate, <clears throat> highgate the highgate folks working on their village core issues has there been some talk about extending water and sewer into High, highgate center into the village area I haven't heard. I, and that would be, I know that there would were, be some bucks. Yeah, that would be a lot of bucks. Yeah, yeah geez, that's got to be at least a three-mile run, Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know we have been uh, approached a couple of years ago. We were yeah. approached by the uh, border crossing. Huh. Uh, they wanted water down there on the U.S. side. Oh, really? So that's almost a seven-mile run wow. to get water there. Really? Yeah. So we told them we got capacity for what uh, volume that they were looking for. Yeah. So we could have supplied them uh, the water. So we just right now I'm just waiting on them. Interesting. Yeah. That would be going down Route Seven. Yeah. And boy, we we've talked about again uh, the issue in the state kind of pressing uh, municipalities uh, that have uh, wastewater treatment plants to reduce phosphorus, and <clears throat> it sounds like Swanton. 
has a, has a big issue coming up on the upgrade of the wastewater facility. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had talked about this, Richard, uh, other times and yeah. stuff. I mean, we could make we could make our TMDLs that the state is requiring of, of us. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's uh, going to be economically uh, not feasible. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you chemically treat, you know, your uh, effluent to uh, remove the phosphorus, it's like, yeah, it's just going to be cost prohibitive. Um, you know, is it going to be more cost prohibitive to upgrade your plant? Well, long yeah. range, no. Yeah. You know, that's probably what you need to do. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no. Um, you know, it, it's it, you know sometimes you hear the term level funding, level funding. I mean, you can level fund only so long, and, and good then luck, eventually, good luck with inflation. Uh, yeah, eventually somebody's going to pay for it. Yeah. Something's going to break. You know, if you yeah. have if you have a home and you don't do due diligence, you know, yeah. you don't check your windows or take care of your roof or yeah. you know paint your siding or your 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 siding, yeah. uh, you know, it's going to deteriorate. You level fund so long, and your infrastructure is going to deteriorate. Yeah. So, and then somebody's going to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, Lake Champlain water quality <coughs> issues always always kind of a big a big story. Have you got a feel? Do you think the lake water quality is kind of holding its own at this point? Is there I obviously think of like the St. Albans Bays, Missisquoi Bays, Lake Carmise of the world? Uh, how, how are you optimistic at all on on that situation getting better? It just seems like such a difficult issue to deal with. Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, if uh, you know, if you do the uh, root cause analysis on yeah. you know what's causing it and stuff, you know, yeah. it's runoff, right? And municipalities again, <clears throat> as Swanton is looking at a, I guess a big you know big project coming up. It and sounds it, like runoff. It sounds like municipal wastewater to two percent of the problem. Two percent of the problem of yeah. the phosphorus yeah. going in. Yeah. Boy. yeah. You know, so hardly, the, hardly uh, the the big problem. Yeah, I mean they look at point sources right. and uh, uh, Which wastewater are easier plants. to deal with, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I mean, I think you know not to blame farming and stuff, but farming has been around a while. Yeah. And the way the techniques uh, farming had been years ago, uh, when you had your uh, manure that was in suspension. So I mean, you were spreading it all year long. You didn't yeah. have to put it into storage tanks when it became you know li liquefy it. Yeah. You know the injection part i think is going to help quite a bit yeah. but you know the the uh the practices that the state has put on to us as our farmers has caused a lot of the issues that we're seeing yeah i think what you need to do like i said root cause you need to go back and say okay how do we how do we treat this runoff from the farm fields prior to getting into the lake yeah and un understanding where your inlets are to the lake and that's where you put in your you know your storm uh your uh, swirl basins or your uh, yeah. storm retentions, you know, so you get the sediment that settles there and not into the lake. Then you get the clean water that goes into the lake. So you need to you need to focus on those areas, I think. Yeah. And the state is still running. Uh, of course, I always ask uh, the village folks about this. Just see what the Lower Village Dam. Have I got the right name? Name Lower name? Swanton Dam. So our Lower Swanton Dam. Yeah. There's always folks who would like to see that out, out of here, gone zone. There's some people, I think it's mixed Lower feelings. Yeah. Dam, yeah. I can absolutely tell you that the Agency of Natural Resources really want yeah. that gone. Really? Is that they, they really, really, want, really like it gone? That is the number one dam in the state of Vermont, according really? to them. Oh, is that right? Yeah. That they would like gone? Yeah. And I would argue. And, and their uh, line is that it would just improve uh, the fishery a lot? Is that their? That's what their claim is. Yeah. That's what their claim and you is. Got, you, you don't buy they that. They can't hang their hat on it. Yeah. You know, uh, the walleye, uh, yeah. walleye association will tell you that uh, the natural reproduction is because the dam is there and it's holding back a lot of the sediment. Yeah. You know, so the eggs can hatch and the fry can prosper and yeah. then, you know, the fish come back. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, I don't know. I think if we had to turn around and tell the agency, hey, tell you what, we'll take, the, you know, you can take the dam out, we'd yeah. get our license up at Highgate. Yeah, <laughs> try make a trade, huh? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to force our hand. Really? Yeah, and it's, huh. I just, I was told I should watch my words, but, <laughs> and I will try to watch my words, but I think... Um, you have a you have that group in there. I I feel they're going they're running drunk and disorderly. Huh. Somebody needs to manage them more appropriately. And and the governor, uh, love Governor Scott to death. He's yeah. a great guy. Um, he was here when we needed him in 2018. Yeah. He was here very often when we needed him in 2018. And dedications. He was here. As in the flood, flooding issues. The flooding we had in 2018. He was here for the Veterans Memorial Bridge dedication. And he's yeah. going to be here for the rail trail dedication. Yeah. Great governor. Yeah. He lets his secretaries run. This their organizations yeah. and stuff. Huh. Uh, the agency needs, they need to be uh, uh, 
held to a different standard. Mm -hmm. They need to be uh, controlled. They have uh, they have a vision. They want all the rivers in the state of Vermont to run naturally. Huh. That's a, that's a vision. <laughs> but then you've got wow. you've got the uh, energy in the state. You know yeah. they want renewable resources, yeah. which our hydro is a renewable resource. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. You can't have your cake and eat it too. There's yeah. got to be, you know. And so the argument was battery storage. Well, yeah. bad, battery storage right now is uh, is very very expensive. Yeah. And the, one of the issues with battery storage is too is the lithium. It's mined. Yeah. So you're you're mining for lithium. That is uh, the trucks, obviously. That Expending are, some energy, obviously, to, yeah, <laughs> to get the lithium. Yeah. But it's, it's probably not in our backyard, so it doesn't right. matter, right? Yeah. But if it was, if you're mining for lithium yeah. along the Missisquoi River, people would be thinking differently yeah. about renewable resources. Yeah. So, it's like you got a resource here that it's a natural resource. I mean, we've been working this river for many, many years. Yeah. We live along the banks of the Missisquoi and along the banks of the uh, Lake Champlain. Yeah. Obviously, we don't want to ruin our natural resource. Yeah. So, it's right. You'd give, have it, a, give us a little bit of credit. Yeah. You'd have a better feel for this, but you didn't mention Governor Scott, or your pretty good feelings for the governor. Got to think. I got to think he must be getting more frustrated again. He wins re-election with what 70 percent of the vote, but also gets a supermajority Democratic legislature. And how many? I guess the veto session again. We're taping the show on. Now, Tuesday, June 20th, the veto session in Montpelier is today, in fact, today yeah. or tomorrow. But, uh, boy, i got to think he's getting just increasingly frust frustrated and stuff. Sounds like he could be governor as long as he wants, but, uh, boy, I'll be interested to see if he hangs in much longer. Yeah, yeah. Boy, it sounds like. But you mentioned uh, maybe not the most hands-on. I think back then, you'd have a better feel for this than me, but I think back to Dick Snelling days in my early days up here, I think he had the reputation for being a real hands-on governor who was really on top of more more than maybe some of his successors about the department heads and stuff for what that's worth. But yeah. uh, well, going back, back then, a few years. Back then, too, local government was a lot smaller. Sure, so you could. everything was yeah, a yeah. lot smaller yeah. and probably easier to do that at that point. Yeah, yeah. The state government, does it seem like it's just way, way too big? Again, I've been up here for, geez, I'm getting close to half a century, but it's still just here persistent. It's just, you know, <clears throat> anti-business or just not pro-business enough. And you still, it still has a change. And the bureaucracy just seems like it's so hard to dislodge kind of or change. Yeah, I mean, the only departments I'm privy to, obviously, yeah. is, uh, you know, the Vermont Emergency Management, which I feel is a great department. Yeah. Uh, they could use more staffing within them. Yeah. Obviously, the division vision for fire safety could use more staffing. Yeah. I mean, that's building inspection, that's life safety. Yeah. Uh, to me, life safety is, should be priority. Yeah. It's the same thing with any anything else. You know, it's it's like, you know, you don't want to pass a police budget, but when you want them, you need them, sure. you want them there, right? Yeah. But then you, you know, well, geez, you know, why do they need another cruiser? Well, yeah. that one's broke down. Or why do you need four more officers? Yeah. Well, it's because you need them yeah. to help protect. Yeah. Same thing with, um, you know, life safety and the fire service. Huh. Um, you know, the Department of Public Safety. Um, you know, Agency of Natural Resources, uh, that's the only department that I'm really dealing with. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Public Utilities Commission, obviously, also, yeah. but uh, I don't know how they're sized. I just know that uh, yeah. for their for their size, they can be uh, challenging. Yeah, challenging. Yeah. Interesting. Looking back on your 12 years, did your, did your job change a lot? I mean, obviously, Swanton <clears throat> comes up and the village has different issues, but did the job itself change much for you or not Not really? Or any thoughts on that? Oh, boy. I was told by a trustee that yeah. I, I took... Did you know what you were getting into when you got when you got the job? But I knew being a manager... What and you succeeded George Le Legu? Legu, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was. I always understood the position of a manager was to was to uh, be there for the people. Yeah. You know that if if I didn't have the employees or the people within the community, what yeah. do you need a manager for? Yeah. So I always felt my role was to serve them. Um, I that's the way I managed when I was at IBM. Yeah. Uh, that's In the fact, way I, I should have asked you that. So you were a manager at IBM for a lot of years. Or? I was 14 and a half years. No, I was really. at IBM for 26 years, wow. but I managed for 14 and a half wow. years. So I've managed, boy, as many as 50 at one time. Oh, really? Wow. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah, I can't, I couldn't, I've interviewed and hired 
hundreds of people really over my years yeah and you were working for ibm right before you took the swanton village yeah. uh, manager job yeah i left ibm on, huh. a, on a thursday i believe it was and i started the village on a monday interesting talking about people uh, finding a job closer to home huh yeah yeah interesting and you know the day i started with the village i quit setting my alarm clock is that right? Yeah, That's right. I would wake up ahead of time and, yeah. and show up to work and people coming in yeah. to work in the morning and, you know, sitting down, we have a coffee, yeah. and we start, you know, just shoot the breeze in the morning, see how everybody is. Yeah. One of the things I used to love, um, you know, I would oh, uh, yeah. Fridays uh, from spring until fall, I wear a Hawaiian shirt, huh. you know, because not that I think I look good in a Hawaiian shirt, but yeah. it's just it makes people smile yeah. on a Friday, just gives them something to, to look forward to. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed the people, um, yeah. And I had a trustee say that I took uh, the position of the village manager and turned it up on its head. Huh. Just made it completely different. Uh, Interesting. And I had always thought that was that was the goal was to serve the community and make sure the employees are happy and yeah. and be there for them. Well, I mean, just the word in term community minded comes right to mind. And of course, not all managers are like that. Obviously, I mean, St. Albans City uh, has had a pretty good run with Dominic Cloud. I think close to 14 years. Yeah. The average in that job is what something like more like five or something. But, of course, he, I think he's an Essex resident, so it's kind of a different case. He certainly gives his job a lot of effort, but I guess probably happy to go, yeah. you know. But obviously you're kind of different situation, just kind of immersed in Swanton. I can, I can honestly I guess tell you, you can that. I make a case both, both ways, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, a trip to the grocery store does take a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but. You know, you hear the good and the bad, yeah. the same thing, and, you know, and then you've got to... And it probably doesn't hurt to have it. You certainly don't get a ton of folks flocking to village trustee meetings, so it probably doesn't hurt to, to, to run into folks who will talk to you, huh? Yeah, you know, yeah. I have never closed the door on anybody coming into the yeah. office. The door was always open for huh. people to come in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they, people, and, and some people didn't, wouldn't, did come in. Especially during voting time. Yeah. I would have the door open uh, or, or yeah. I'd be outside seeing the, yeah. uh, you know, the candidates for the position and stuff yeah. and just sit and talk with them, make sure they were, you know, obviously March can be yeah. hit and miss as far as it's warm or cold, yeah. Yeah. but just be there for everybody. And yeah, I just, yeah, always, always open to hear what people had to say. There was one gentleman, he walks yeah. the, he walks the village all the time. Yeah. And, uh, and they used to always enjoy him coming in the office and he would just change subjects like the, like the wind. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But he was, it was just one of the things he did in his daily walk He wanted to swing by and talk. Interesting. Yeah. It's about three, three minutes left. Uh, biggest challenge, would you point to one or two big, big <coughs> challenges for Swanton? Again, we talked about the wastewater facility project, but the relicensing, obviously that stuff comes to mind. I think uh, those are going to be the two major challenges going forward for, yeah. for Bill uh, and for myself helping Bill yeah. um, would be the relicensing. Uh, the wastewater plant, it's something we have to do. It's an enterprise fund. So... Uh, you know, it'll come into rates uh, and not taxes. Uh, I don't think the rates are going to shift all that much as yeah. far as your water sewer rates. Uh, yeah. We're really struggling, uh, or we're really hoping to keep electric rates as low as they are. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a big shift in that in the near future yeah. either. Uh, we're still waiting to go the automated metering s infrastructure. Yeah. Right now, the lead time on the meters is what's holding us up. Really? Yeah. Um, I mean, just difficult getting people to do do that work <coughs> even or it's no we would do it in house no you do it in house yeah yeah do the do the okay. switch for the uh, for the water meters and the electric meters huh. but I think I think the biggest challenge is going forward is going to be the uh, the shift in electrification yeah. it's how our grid's going to handle it how hmm. are we going to make sure each household has what they need to be able to charge their vehicle hmm. um, yeah I think that's going to be probably uh, probably one of the biggest challenges going forward yeah you know the state of vermont has aggressive goals but uh yeah i mean you gotta you gotta put your uh, chicken before your egg or your egg before <laughs> your chicken you know yeah. i don't know which goes first yeah so your swanton village uh manager tenure course is over but it sounds like uh you're gonna stay still very focused uh involved in swanton sounds like that passion whatever is not going anywhere now, now, you know, like I said, the new position within the state of Vermont, it'll yeah. be affecting the whole state. Wow. So it'll be trying to bring all the fire departments together uh, and figuring out what they have for needs for fire education, fire prevention. Huh. Uh, you know, it's all about trying to keep 
people safe, keep them educated and how they can be safe. Uh, I just wish we could be that. Uh, is that, that is that a new job? Or are you is that a new job that's been created that you have? Or it, no, they had uh, part-time positions before, yeah. uh, but they've come and gone. Huh. And uh, it just happened that I was at a party and the, the really? deputy director saw me there and <laughs> says, "You're retiring." I says, "Yeah." Huh. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah. Interesting. But I've always said, you know, you go a thousand miles an hour and you hit the brakes, you're going to yeah. go through the windshield. I'm not ready to retire yet. No, no not at all. Reg, I guess we're out of time, but again, it sounds like you can look back on just a pretty impressive 12 years as Thanks. village manager, and it, again, sounds like you're going to still stay very involved in a lot of stuff in Swanton. Yeah, I appreciate everything anyway. you do here, too, Richard. Well, thank, well, thanks for the time. I certainly appreciate your accessibility, and it sounds like we may have some stuff to talk about in the future. Sure, Who knows? absolutely. Thanks to Reg Bellavo, the former longtime Swanton village manager. Thanks to producer Alan Cunningham. Thanks for watching us here on Northwest Access TV. I'm Richard Copperthwaite. See you next time.